Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. O Lord, you have come that we may have life. You have spoken to us that your joy may remain in us. O Lord. You are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and great in mercy. You are good to all, and your tender mercies are over all your works. You uphold all who fall, and rise up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Heavenly Father, you have called us to your supper, a supper in which we pray that we may come worthily, And yet, O Lord, we know only that which is yours in us draws us to you and makes us worthy. Lord, we ask that we may enter more deeply into the sanctity, the beauty, the peace and confidence that your word gives us, that you may dwell more fully in us and draw us more and more close to you and also to one another. For you have given us the commandment that we love one another that you, as you have loved us, and that we can truly indeed be your disciples if we keep this commandment. Lord, help show us the way, the pathway that leads into your kingdom, and help us keep that way. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for justice sake. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise him, O you servants of the Lord.
Please be seated. Reading selections from the Gospel of John, chapters 16 and 17. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming when whoever kills you will believe that they think they will believe that they offer service to God. These things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you, but now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you asks, where are you going? But because I have said these things, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I say to you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, and of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, and he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that my Father has given me are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. A little while, and you will see me. And then again, a little while, you will not see me, because I go to the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, you will weep and lament. But the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she given, has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from the Father. I came forth from the Father and I've come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. The disciples said to him, See, now you are speaking plainly and using no figure of speech. Now we are sure that you know all things and have need that no one should question you. By this we believe that you have come forth from God. Jesus answered, Do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming, and has now come, that you will be scattered, each of you to his own, and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. <clears throat> These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you may have peace. In the world... You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus spoke these things and lifted his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you. And now I am no longer in the world, but these are left in the world. I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave to me, I have kept. None of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. 
But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from evil. They are not of this world, just as I am not of this world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that also they may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory with which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and I have loved them as you have loved me. Amen. Continuing chapter 13, or chapter 18 into chapter 19. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the book Kidron, the brook Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who had betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus often met there with his disciples. And Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests of the Pharisees and the Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. 
Jesus, therefore knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said, I am. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. And now when he said, I am, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then he again asked them, Whom are you seeking? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. He answered, I have told you that I am. And therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. And then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put up your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? Then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. And they led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus. So did the other disciple. Now that disciple was known to the high priest and went with Jesus to the courtyard, courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door outside. Then the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. Then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter, Are you not also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. Now the servant and the officers who had made a fire of coal stood there, for it was cold. They warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple where the Jews always meet. And in secret, I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I have said. When he said these things, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Do you answer the high priest like that? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. Therefore they said to him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of him whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the rooster crowed. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium, and it was early morning, but they themselves did not go into the praetorium because it was lest they be defiled and that they might not then eat the Passover. Pilate then went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him to you. Then Pilate said to them, You take him and judge him according to your law. Therefore the Jews said to him, It's not lawful for us to put anyone to death. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying by what death he would die. Then, Je then Pilate entered the praetorium again and called Jesus, said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, 
Are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you this concerning me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Jesus therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus, Jesus answered. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? then? And Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness of the truth. Everyone who hears the truth hears my voice. And Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to him, I find no fault in him at all. But you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release to you the king of the Jews? And they all cried again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then they took Jesus and they scourged him. And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put him in a purple robe. Then they said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him with their hands. Then Pilate went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. And Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Therefore, when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him. I find no fault in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Therefore, when Pilate heard this saying, He was all the more afraid. He went to the praetorium and he said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate said to him, Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you and the power to release you? Jesus answered, You could have no power at all against me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard this saying, he brought Jesus out. He sat down in the judgment seat in the place called the pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha, Now it was the preparation, the day of the Passover, about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answers, We have no king but Caesar. Then he delivered him into their hands to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out to the place called the place of the skull, which is in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side, and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And then many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Therefore, the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, 
But he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. Amen. Continuing in chapter 19, from verse 22 on, Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to each soldier a part, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, which say, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine and put, hip, put it on hyssop and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. Therefore, because it was the day of preparation that the body should not remain on the cross, on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. And when the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who was crucified with him, but when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. 
They did not break his legs. But one of them pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who had seen these things has testified, and his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you may believe. For the things that were done, that the scriptures should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And another scripture says, They shall look upon him whom they have pierced. And this, after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and they bound it in strips of linen with spices, as is the custom of the Jews to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in that garden a new tomb in which no one yet had been laid. So they laid Jesus there because the Jews' preparation day was at hand and the tomb was nearby. Amen. Here end our reading of our lessons. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Fiction and burial and then resurrection is a story. 
story of birth and new life. We love having this around this time of year when Easter can come as new life begins in new gardens or old gardens, depending upon where you are. But our spiritual life is to be a garden. When the Lord created humanity, we were said to be planted in the garden of Eden. And we read of the holy city of Jerusalem, and of the trees and of the plants there, and that the river of the water of life is given flowing through that city, but that that city is, as it were, life, a garden, in terms of the new life and new birth that are presented to us, which we can receive. So when we come forward to partake of the Lord's Supper, it is coming forward to ask of the Lord that we may be renewed like a garden. We close our reading with the Lord being put into that new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And it is a representative symbol of the new life the Lord gives us. And that all things of our natural life must die. In speaking to his disciples, he talked to them a lot about the things of the world, that those who are in the world will be overjoyed that he was going to be crucified. And that people will persecute you and be overjoyed and believe they're doing God a service because they come from the things of the world that do not cherish the things that Jesus has been telling them. Perhaps it's nowhere more pronounced that the people that crucified the Lord, and we need to identify ourselves as to those people, they were savoring the things of the world. And the Lord was not offering them worldly things, but heavenly ones. No more evident than when Pilate came and presented Jesus and said, Here is your king. And they said, We have no king but Caesar. Imagine the leaders of the church, the people that were put in the place of Moses, the lawgiver. Shouting out, we have no king but Caesar. The words given to us to help us identify within ourselves those things which stand in the way of us and him. And we identify with each character in the word because it's all about how the Lord can bring us from the states represented there to the heavenly state. And so we need to identify within ourselves when we cry out in various ways various times, that we have no king but Caesar. How is it that we may find ourselves more interested in serving worldly things, don't want to be embarrassed about spiritual things, or perhaps don't want people to find out we're trying to do that with is right? And it may not be such a challenge when we're in and among our friends in the church. However, coming out into the world, we may easily find that the world's allurements fascinate us as well and get us attracted to follow the pleasures there instead of the ones the Lord offers us. Jesus spoke to his disciples and said, I am going to the Father. No one asks me where I'm going. And then a little bit later on, when he says the same thing, they do ask, and they say, now you're telling us plainly. We do understand, and of course, they do. Little by little, we approach the Lord in our lives, leaving behind worldly things, asking the Lord to help us catch ourselves when we're following those worldly things more than we're following Him. Reminding us of both the Jews who should have known better, and in fact did, like we do, and also of Peter, who didn't know any better. I will go to you even to death. So oh, Peter, Jesus said before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. He didn't even know. One aspect is not mentioned in this. At the time when Jesus was on the cross, getting ready to have his body die, 
and he looked to the people that were crucifying him, to the soldiers that were dividing his garments and casting lots for his clothes, and saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Of course, there are parts of us that should know better because we've been taught. And there are also things in our lives that we just don't have any idea. We don't know why. The Lord comes and forgives both those states in us. The Lord forgave the Jews who cried out, crucify him, we have no king but Caesar. The soldiers who divided up his garments, the people who stood around mocking him, and he forgives us. We need to identify with those states in us that do cry out against the Lord. We come worthily to the Lord's Supper because we are seeking those things out. We're asking the Lord to have them die, have them be left behind. We come forward to the Lord, to the Lord, as the disciples later on came forward to that tomb in the garden, not knowing what they would find, even though the Lord had told them over and over. We do know, and yet we don't. The Lord asks us to come to him, all of us who labor at our heavy labor, that he may give us peace and rest. His yoke is easy, and his burden is light. To have the Lord lighten our burden, to forgive us of our sins. The Holy Supper is representative of the Lord giving up himself, that we in fact can come into the garden of new life that he provides. Amen.